that accolades, that prestige, that honor, that job, whatever that Father Yah has given you, you've said Father Yah gives, Father Yah takes. Yeah. And you might go to say, is he reasonable? Yes, he is. Because it is written, I will have mercy to whom I have mercy. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it's written, you cannot, as a clay, complain to the Father, why are you making me like this? The same thing here. We cannot question the wisdom of Father Yah. All we can do is obey and trust Him. Yeah. It says here in verse 16, I have rejected Saul from reigning over Israel. Fill thy horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Yesi, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king where among his sons. Now, Jesse or Yesai or Yesi has eight sons. And out of these eight, David is the youngest. So when Shimuel went there and see the first son, Shimuel said, this is it. He is tall, he is handsome, he is buffeted. He is, because four of his sons are soldiers of Saul. So, she will think, it is the first one. But take a look at what Father Yah said in verse 7. 1 Samuel 16, verse 7. But Father Yah said unto Shemuel, look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature because what? I refuse him. For Father Yah seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance but Father Yah look into the heart. Are we the kind of individual that we judge people the way we see Sometimes we do. Sometimes we think that he is a good man if we see him dressed in good clothes, he have a good car, he had a good, you know, a good home. We think he is like that. That's right. And when we see a beggar man or a poor man, we say, yeah, probably because of this, because of that. We human beings judge like that. But Father Yah said, I am not That's right. as man because I am looking to the heart. That's why it is written, Thou shalt not be respecter of person. That's right. Because that is a sin. Hallelujah. We should see each other as equal yes. sons and daughters of the Most High yes. if we fear Him as our Father in heaven. Right. So, irregardless of our where we came from, Father, yes, not talking about who you are as a person. He's asking you who you are in terms of who you are individually, in terms of how you think, how you perceive of him, how you're going to obey him, how are you going to prove your faith on him. That's what Father Yah is asking for you to show your faithfulness on him. That's why Father Yah said, I'm not talking about that. This man is not the king. So after Jesse paraded all his seven sons, and Father Yah said, none of them. And Shemuel said, don't you have any other son? And Jesse said, I have one. But this one is just a child. He is out of the field, tending the sheep. Now imagine this David come from the sheep. And yet, when Shemuel saw David, Father Yah Father Yas said, here it is. That's the king. Yeah. When Father Yah choose you to do his own purpose. You cannot say, I am a child. I cannot speak. That's what Moses said, isn't it? Moses said, complains, Father Yah, I cannot speak. You cannot send me to Egypt. Father Yah said, who make the, who, who make me, who make the tongue of man who can speak? Did I not the one who made him? So when he chooses us to do his word, Irregardless. Because no matter what, your 
are going to do his will. If we are going to obey him with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind. So in here, when Jesse saw, I'm sorry, when Shemuel saw Jesse, here in verse 12, in verse, what is that? Verse 12, he said, 16 verse 12, it says here, And he said and brought him, meaning David, now he was ruddy, meaning pinkish. His color meaning she's like he's still young and with a lot of beautiful countenance and goodly to look to and what he said arise anoint him for he is my king they're going to rule Israel this is me so now imagine the ship heard the shepherd boy who is only what probably in his teenagers was chosen already to be a king now the question is, did David love Father Yah all throughout of his life? Let us find out. If after all these blessings that Father Yah bestowed on David, let's see if David is true to the end. If there's one sin that David, that David did, it is written in 2 Samuel chapter 11. Let us find how if David was able to resist his flesh. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, or oh, chapter 11, should I say, and it starts in verse 12. And it came to pass in an evening time, you will as the sun goes down. That David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. Now, where's David now? He's still on the field tending flocks? No, he's now a royalty. He is now in the king's house. He is now in the king's palace. He is now a king. From his humbly beginning, the father you have brought him from. And it says, as he walked on the roof of the king's house, and from the roof he saw what? A woman washing herself. Now imagine the setting of this story. Now David is on the, his balcony on top of his palace. Now way back then I believe we have what we call public bathroom. You know, because the water centralized way back then I believe. So that all people can have their you know, public bathroom, that they can take their bath and everything in there. But the thing is there is no roof on that public bathroom. That's why David was able to see that woman taking a bath. Now the question is, what happened when David saw the woman? David got displaced. David desires for that woman. That's why, did you not hear what is written, what is read this morning? about Brother Shandos read in Mark chapter 9? If your eyes will make you see, pluck it out. It's better for you to go blind, to be blind and go and enter the kingdom of Padilla and have two eyes and enter here and now. And it says here, he saw that woman, and that woman was very beautiful to look upon. Yeah. I have read that every fall of a man is a woman. Mm -hmm. And at the same adage, it says every man's rise is also a woman. Now, is this woman makes David rise? makes David fall. Yeah. Makes David fall. Yeah. Because look, in verse 3 he said, and David sent and inquired after the woman. Now, when David saw the woman, what David did? David asked, who is that woman? Right? And one said, 
Is it not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, and what? The wife of Uriah the Hittite. She didn't have to stop. Very good, my sister. He or she is the wife of one of his soldiers. And this soldier is not at home. Where is the soldier doing the battle for David? And David is in his palace doing nothing while his soldiers are still in the battle. What a shame as a leader, isn't it? Instead of him with his soldiers, but he was there in his palace. Now, right there and then, David can say, stop. I cannot take that woman. Yeah. Now, mind you, David has already five wives before Bathsheba. Yeah. Because David, I believe, has six wives, uh, seven, seven wives. Bathsheba is six, Abisag is a seven. He got five already. Can you imagine? He got five already. What makes this woman so different about the five? You know what? Proudness, I guess. Because he thinks he's the king. And he can do whatever he wants to do. And did you know that inkling that we have sometimes as human beings? When we have that aggressiveness, that thinking that we want to do something, we just want to do it. We must just want, because we just really want it. That's what David probably is. That particular moment. Because David could just say no after knowing the fact that Bathsheba is the wife of a soldier. <coughs> but David took Bathsheba nevertheless. That's his downfall, right? But David should stop in there, right? No, he did not stop. Because when David figured out and find out that Bathsheba is pregnant, what did he do? Now, he tries to cover it up. He asked Bathsheba's husband, Uriah, to come out from the battle and be with his wife, right? But Uriah said, I cannot be with my wife. Why? My master is still there. Now, I think he's a loyal soldier. I cannot be with my wife. My master is still there. And you know what happened? David did another mistake. He allowed Uriah the Hittite to be killed in the battlefield. Just like that. You know, it is one thing to know what you're going to do is sin. But the question is, after you know it is sin to do so, and you still want to do it, and after you know that sin is the transgression of the Torah, and the wages of sin is death. death. Now, the death our Savior is talking here and the apostle talking here is not the death here on earth. It's not this death. It's the second death. It's the second death. But the question is, you know, this one, one so good of our Father, he will give you the opportunity to redeem yourself, isn't it? Hallelujah. And how many times Father God gave us the opportunity to redeem ourselves? Not only one, not only twice, so many times. Because a 